Hi everyone, Code Queen Ayeli. I hope you're ready because I am about to show you how to create the easiest member dashboard with a prompt to determine whether or not the person already has an existing profile. And if they don't, it'll show a button so that way they can be redirected to the profile sign up. Then after they do that, it actually has a special code that will determine whether or not there is a duplicate for that person's username that they have entered into their profile. So here's the live tutorial site. Let me sign up. And as soon as I sign up, I will be able to see this, my profile or log out. So I'm going to click on my profile. And I land on the profile page. This is the members page. Up at the top it says, welcome new user, please create a profile. So the only thing that they could possibly do is click on this button. They'll be redirected to another page where they can fill out their information. The email is automatically taken from the email that they use to log in. Username I'll do one, two, three. And I'll do a code you know, just to show a, a unique example, because possibly you want to create a website where they will be referring people. After I click Save Profile, I'm redirected right back to the same profile page I landed on at the beginning, but now this time, the Create a Profile button is gone. I know! Now let me try to update my profile. I'm just adding a four, one, two, three, four, and then it'll tell me that the username is already taken, because I actually have another profile that I added the username to be 1234. Now let me select a new one, just 123. Update completed. Ah, it changed. It gave me a message. Pretty cool, right? So before I show you this, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the little button down below. Turn on the little notification bell to get notified each time I upload a new Wix code video. And if you have any questions and if you need a little bit of help with coding, please consider joining the Facebook group, Totally Codable Wix Code Community, where you will have the opportunity to interact with Wix code experts and myself. Let's dive into the editor. Down below on the description of this video, find the tutorial site link. Click on that and join me in the Wix editor. The very, very first thing that we're going to use and add is the member area. So from the editor, go to the add button, scroll down to where it says members, and you'll see this, add members area. Click on that so we can add it to the site. Give it a minute while it does its thing. <laughs> Once it finishes, go ahead and click on get started. The my account area. We're not going to use this for this tutorial. Turn on the developer tools, select this member profile area, and click hidden on load. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and just push it over to the side. And that's all we need to get started. Now you can create your profile page. This is the information that they're going to be looking at every single time they log in. In my example, I decided to do two things. I added user input elements to display information that I would like for them to have the option to update later. Connected it to one data set. This data set is called Update Profile and I set it to Read and Write. I've also set it with a filter that reads Owner. So when the field Owner, all the way at the bottom, is logged in, it will show only their information. This database that the data set is connected to is called Profile. My profile database is made up of a first name, last name, email address, phone user, referred by, and referral code. The permissions for this are set to site member can read, site member can create, site member author can update, and only the admin can delete. So back to the profile page. I have the second set of information, which is here, this text and this text. This is set to read only, and I've added another data set. I've connected it to the same exact database collection, but 
I have it set to read only. This one also has the same owner filter. This button is the update profile button. It is connected to all the user input elements. Through the dataset icon, this failure message will show up if there's an error. Now I need to explain to you how I built this form. I actually created it on a strip, and the reason I did that is because when this page loads, this dataset for the update profile is filtered by the owner. So if there is no owner because he has no profile, then that field will be empty. So if it is empty, if there is no record, then I told the code I'm hiding the entire strip and I'm actually telling it to collapse. That way these buttons move up. If I don't tell it to collapse, if I only tell it to hide, then there'll be a really wide space there because all of this will be gone, but this space will still exist. Now I have to tell you about the signup page. I've created another page for the members. To do that, you hover over member pages, click on this little icon, and select add a new page. This will automatically add it to the members only. It will not add it to your site. Therefore, it will not add it to your top menu. It will appear in this menu. So because it does that, and because it is our sign up that we only want them to use one time, you're going to go to the settings of your sign up page and you're going to select hide from member menu. I added regular elements. I added a button so I can um, prompt and trigger a code at the bottom of my page, but I did not add a data set. So if you already started adding a data set, please delete it. None of these elements are connected to a data set on the page. Everything is connected by code. And at the same time, I decided to be creative. I added this referral code section. So this text will display a specific referral code. And just to make it easier for my tutorial, I actually told the code, whatever their user ID number is, get the last piece of it, and that's gonna be the referral code. Now, are you ready to see the code? Okay, let's go over it then. So for the page code, there are two pages that require code, the profile page where they land on and the sign up page to submit the information into the database. Let's look at the first one, the profile page. So this is the page code for the profile. So on ready, we're going to perform a function and we're going to wait until the data set is ready. When it is the same data set, we're going to get the current item. This current item, I'm going to name the variable is empty because that's the whole item itself, the record. And then I also want the name. So I'm gonna get the name from the first name, user input element, I'm gonna get the value that's there. So if is empty, if there is no item there, if it equals null, then the create profile button will show, the update profile button will hide, and the profile area will collapse. Also, I have a text at the very top of the page. It's called welcome user. I want it to say, welcome you user, please create a profile. Or else, the update profile button will show and that welcome user text at the very top will say, welcome the name. And then I want the profile area to expand just in case it was collapsed. I've also added an on after save code. So after the update profile data set saves, I want to get the name, hashtag first name value, and then I also want the user welcome text message at the very top of the screen. Instead of saying welcome user, it'll say update completed for 2.5 seconds. That same hashtag welcome user text will say welcome and then their name again. Pretty cool, right? Now let's go over the code for the signup page. For the signup page, we're going to be using three APIs, Wix users, Wix data, and Wix location. On ready, we're going to get the current user, and I'm going to call this variable user, and then I need the user ID, so user.id. But remember, this is the one that I'm using for the referral code, 
So if you're not doing that, you can skip this line. We don't need it. Then the user email will equal email. Inside of the hashtag email text value, I'm going to insert that email, and that is how it's automatically shown on the page. For the referral code, this is my variable, let referral code equal. I'm going to get the user ID and I'm going to split it. I'm splitting it where all the dashes are and I'm going to get the fourth placement. Then I'm going to get the referral code text element and that will equal my referral code that I just got up here. So it'll insert it there and it'll display it. My button on click is triggered here. We'll insert the following, the first name, the last name, email address, phone, username, referred by, and referral code. These are what the field keys are. So go inside of your database, get the field key name, and insert it here. This is where the information is going to go. This is the information that's going to be added in. So for the first name inside of my database, I'm going to add the hashtag first name value, then the last name value, and then the email text value, and so on and so on. All I'm doing is adding the name of the elements. I want that value to go inside of that place. Now, there is one that is not a value, it's actually a text. It is a referral code. So this one is written differently. It's hashtag referral code dot text. Then, after the Wix data inserts, inside of profile, profile is my database name, it's gonna do to insert. After it does that, I want to send them Wix location to my account page, which is the profile page, the very, very first page that they landed on. Let me show you where to get this URL for that page. Let's go to the pages, go to members, profile, settings, go to SEO, and this is where you will see the name of your page slash account slash profile dash page is what I named it. So if you're not doing any duplicated values or usernames or anything like that, then stop watching the video right here. You don't need to go any further. All you need to do is click on the top menu, select page code and copy the two page codes for the profile page and the sign up page and you're done. Voila. For the rest of you that decided to get a little bit creative with me, Come on, there's a little bit more to go and I'm gonna show you everything in that code that needs to be changed. So let's take a look at that backend code. In the backend, if you have not worked with that before, you're going to go over here in the site structure menu bar. You're gonna look for backend. You're gonna click the plus sign and you're gonna add a new JS file. Don't click new web module, don't click file, don't click folder. You need a new .js file. So once you do that, you're going to label it data. Don't get fancy, because if you get fancy, it will not work. Trust me, I tried. It needs to be called data.js. Once you create that, you're going to add this code right here. In the description of the video, I will also include a link to the Wix form thread where I got this part of this backend code from. And part of it was written by this programmer, and I am so sorry, but I'm not going to try to say your name because if I do, I'm probably going to say it wrong. N-A-B-E-E-L. Thank you so much for this code. So I'm going to explain to you what this code is. And this code was partially started. This code that I'm about to show you runs at the very beginning when they're going to insert the information to the database the very first time. There's an export function at which we're going to call search for duplicates usernames. It's just a variable. You can change that to say whatever you want. We're going to do a Wix data query for the database profile. It's going to equal the username and the value dot username. Username and username is the same field key. Make sure you write it the same. We're going to get the results and we want the results items length. From there, before insert into your profile database, this is the name of your database followed by underscore before insert. It has to be written that way. It's going to return search for duplicate usernames. This is the name of your code up here. It has to match the same thing. Then these results, if the results are greater than zero, which means there is one, at least one, then reject 
the entry. So that means this username is already taken. Then the second part of the code is also going to check for the same duplicates when they're updating a new username. We need to run the check again to make sure that username still does not exist in somebody else's account. It's called search for username IDs. So we're doing a query on our database called profile. We're looking for the username. So here it is again, value.username. And we're also searching for the email address, value.email address. Then we're going to find it and get the results. With these results, now we're going to go to the bottom. I'm going to go to export function profile before update. Profile is the name of my database. It's, the, it's in the beginning of this word, followed by underscore before update. We're going to be grabbing the search results from the search for users IDs. If the results are greater than zero, we're going to allow the change to happen. Or else, if it's not greater than zero, we're going to return search results for duplicate usernames. And if the result is greater than zero, then we reject it. That's it. That's your easy <laughs> membership dashboard. Well, that was a lot of code. You just learned how to create a member dashboard. But on top of that, you also learn how to check for duplicates just in case you want one unique field inside of that custom dashboard that you just created. Now, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I hope to see you in my Facebook group soon. So we can keep showing you how the things that you want to do are totally codable. Bye.